Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Would you uh, please try some toast, Mrs. Brown? Mm. You have the appetite, David. That's because I've got a clear conscience. No regrets of any kind for anything. Not even one regret for marrying me? Not even one. Good. Then I'll let you have your coffee. Ow. Careful, it's hot. Well, thanks for telling me. You're welcome. Hand all right? Oh, fine, grand, grand. Mmm, toast sounds good this morning. It is. Wonderful. New kind of bread. I'm glad you like it, David. That's his fourth piece, Claudia. His fifth. And stop counting, Mommy. You're making self-conscious. <laughs> I like to see him eat. Thank you. Thank He's you. a growing boy. He needs nourishment. Says to himself. I also need cream for my coffee, if you don't mind. <gasps> I forgot the cream is still outside in the hall. Uh, I'll get it. I'll Sit get still, it. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. You can't go out looking like that, Claudia. Yes, do you want to disgrace me, young lady? I'm perfectly willing and able to get the cream myself. As a matter of fact, I'd rather than have all the I'd rather. I'll go. No one will see me. Careful, you're shaking the table. Sorry, Mama. As long as you're up, Mrs. Norton, would you mind closing that window? The draft is blowing my coffee too cool for me. You don't like the air? I love the air, but it's too much. First thing in the morning is when you need it most. First thing in the morning is when I need some cream for my coffee most. It's practically on the table right now. Quite a struggle. Glad to see you've got willpower, David. Oh, your daughter's not so bad, Mrs. Brown. I'll get used to her, but uh, you should see some of my clients. Isn't they difficult, too? Oh, very, very. <laughs> You'll manage. Anything in particular you'd like me to teach Claudia to make for you tonight? Mm, give her full swing and see what she comes up with. How about that? <laughs> you don't know the risk you're running. <laughs> it's taking an awfully long time getting that cream. I've got an early appointment at the office today, too. Claudia? Claudia, where are you, darling? We're too big to play hide-and-seek, little girl. Come on back. Funny. She never misses a chance to answer back. Oh. Claudia? Come on back, dear. All is forgiven. Maybe something happened, David. Oh, uh, we better go look for her. She'd expect it. Claudia? Claudia, where are you? Answer me. David? She's not in the kitchen or in the living room. No? Maybe you... Did you... What about the window? No, no. That, that, that's ridiculous, Mother. I, I, I told her to look. Oh, but she didn't. David, where do you suppose... Now, Mother, there's no need to get upset. <sighs> oh, there she is. She must have locked herself out. I'll go. We'll both go. Oh. When I get my hands on her, we're coming, we're coming. Yeah. It's stuck again. This time from the inside. Lift up on it. Her head's such a mess in that house coat. I should leave her out there all morning, too. I would if I didn't have to get to the office. There. Now you can come in. She's not here. No one is. Hmm? Claudia. If this is your idea of a joke, Claudia. Claudia! Claudia! Good morning. <coughs> Who's your dog? <coughs> no, no, just my wife. Oh, well, she's not in the hall. <coughs> I passed here just a minute ago to pick up my paper at the elevator. <coughs> thanks, thanks a lot. Well, all right. You ought to do something for that <coughs> car. Right. Mother, she's not in the hall. She must be somewhere in here. In the bed. Oh, I know it. Out the back door, out the back door. Claudia! Claudia! It's the front door again. She oh. must be out there. I'm coming, Claudia. I'm coming. Let me in, David. Let me in quick. I am, I am. Hurry up. Well, what happened? Where were you? I, I could the ring lock your neck. Stuck again. Oh, that lock. You're all dusty. Of course I'm dusty. I was in the broom closet for half an Here, hour. Take this rag off your place. Very oh. logical place to be, too. Come on in, Mrs. Norton. It's not the broom closet, but come on in. Oh, thanks. Hey, dust me off, Mama. 
I suppose the milkman left the cream in the broom Listen, closet. Listen, will you let me explain? I went out for the cream. Oh, oh no. David, then the I knew I should have gone. the window the door shut after I me. told you to close that window, and remember? Just as I was knocking to get back in, a man came down the hall. Mm. Well, naturally, I didn't want anybody to see me looking like this, and, and the lock stuck, so I hid. <laughs> in what the broom like? closet. He didn't see me either. Well, good for him. Neither did we when we opened the door. That's because you we were... You were in the broom closet, right. I know. Now, both of you sit down and listen to what I have to say. Sit down there. Sit down. I'm sitting. Now, something has got to be done about that lock in the front door today. Any questions? Do you have time to finish your coffee, David? Hmm. It's cold. I'll warm it up for you. I'll drink it cold. Never mind. Where's the cream? <gasps> David! I left it in the broom closet. Good afternoon. Something for you two ladies? Yes, we'd like to buy a new lock. Door lock? What size? Uh, what size is our lock, Mama? Just average. I didn't know they'd go by sizes. Oh, size of the hole drilled in your door. If you want me to install it for you, doesn't make any difference. I'll bring my drill along. Oh, we'll want you to install it. Fifty cents extra. That'll be all right. Uh, any particular kind of lock you want? I got a tricky new one come in last uh, week. Nothing it... tricky, please. Just the least complicated lock you have. Ah. Uh, I'll tell you what. Got a used lock in a trade today. Uh, let you have it for fifty cents off list price. Put it in for you besides. Is it in good condition? Pretty war, lady. What do you think, Claudia? As long as it works, Mama. Say, we'll be 50 cents to the good, too. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll take it. Uh, can you install it this afternoon? Be right with you, lady. Be right with you. Mama, what time is it? 6.20, and can I come into the kitchen now? Not yet. I want to try and make the potato salad by myself. Sure you don't want any help? Positive. Say, this is fun. Well, be sure you wash the grater off. Onion sticks in the little holes. Mama, how'd you know? You're using a very strong onion. <laughs> These are my first tears since I've been married. <laughs> well, everything's in the ice box. David should be home soon. You know, my timing's getting wonderful. Mm. Did you see the steak? I put on some garlic. Doesn't eat garlic. How do you know? We're not having steak. Since when? Since I marketed steak tomorrow. Tonight, cold cuts. Claudia, it's a little early in your marriage for cold cuts. Cold cuts warm heart. Besides, it goes better with potato salad. The cold cuts, of course. Of course. What are you rubbing your eyes for? What do you think they itch? Don't you remember I told you to keep a slice of apple between your teeth when you're peeling onions? I did. Only it tasted so good I ate it before I got around to the onion. Uh, clean up the kitchen? Of course. Say, Mama... Don't you think that big chair look better next to the window instead of next to the radio? I do not. There'd be no place to sit next to the radio, then. Well, we can move the chair from the other window next to the radio. We tried it like that a month before you married David. We decided we didn't like it. Mama, a woman's point of view changes about lots of things after she gets married. Give me a hand with the chair, Mama, will you? All right. Against my better judgment. Let's not lift. Let's push. Ready? Mm-hmm. One, two, push. Oh. Oh. oh, that's David. I'll have to open for him. He doesn't have the key to the new lock yet. I'm beginning to feel the same way about that door that he does. Coming. Hello, darling. Hey, what's the matter? Come on in. I know everything can be explained now. I know that. I don't believe in the supernatural. But this defies all laws of man, nature, and Claudia. What does, David? Hey, don't just stand there. Come on in. Hello, David. What's wrong? Nothing, Mrs. Brown. Nothing at all. Probably just me. David, you're not sick. Not very, I don't think. I'll just sit down here in this chair in the middle of the floor, facing nowhere in particular. From here, the room has a slightly rakish appearance. Like a picture I once saw called After the Earthquake. We're moving it to the window when you're not. I'm very sorry I interrupted you, but I did want to get in, if you don't mind. I had a perfectly good key, of course, to a brand new lock that I installed this afternoon while you girls were out. The perfectly good key to the brand new lock worked fine. I tried it before I left. Then I come home. Mm -hmm. The perfectly good key no longer fits the brand new lock. It doesn't. No. 
because the brand new lock no longer looks brand new. Now, can there possibly be an explanation <laughs> for that? It's funny, isn't it? We all thought to change the key today. Oh, I told you the man was right, Claudia. What man, Mother? The man who put in the lock Mom and I bought this evening. He said the lock in the door was a new one. I told him it was crazy. I told him it was the same one we'd had for years. Mm, you did, huh? Mm-hmm. The man was right. But it doesn't matter, David. We have another lock on the door now. It didn't cost much at all because, you see, Mom and I bought a slightly used one. Mm hmm? A slightly used one? Pre-war. And where does this little bargain come from? The little man on the corner, Mr. Uh, Potter, I think his name mm, was. Potter. Mm -hmm. The little man on the corner. David, where are you going? I've just had a horrible thought, and I'm going to verify it. Uh, it's verified. What's verified? I visited Mr. Potter this afternoon. I brought him the lock we had on this door. I traded it to him for a new one. So... There's no wonder that my old key fits this lock. <laughs> David, you mean that this... Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you have a distorted sense of humor, Mrs. Brown. I know. Isn't it terrible? <laughs> <It's wonderful. laughs> Mama and I bought our old lock back. Mm, brilliant, my child. Exactly. That's what you did. Oh, well, what's the difference? It works now. Mr. Potter must have fixed it. Oh, of course. Of course I know it sure works. Because Mama and I didn't have any trouble with it. And just now you didn't. No, but I probably will. You won't, time. darling. Besides, I'm kind of glad we've got the old lock back. It's almost just like a member of the family. Well, as long as it works. But if it sticks just once... You buy yours back. Come on in now, David. The cold cuts will be warm. <laughs> well, since we're all safely inside at one time, I'll shut the door. Besides... You wouldn't want me to kiss you in front of an open door, would you, Claudia? The story material used in this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. You've probably noticed that it's much easier to get Coca-Cola these days. But has it occurred to you to buy yours by the case? Buying Coca-Cola by the case is really a very good idea. Your grocer or service station will gladly put one in your car for you. You get 24 bottles. With 24 bottles in the refrigerator in the pantry, you're set to take care of a thirsty family and thirsty friends. Why not ask your grocer or your service station attendant to put a case of Coca-Cola in your car today? <laughs> Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. Thank you.